Welcome to another edition of the Heron Outlet. He is Austin Roblard. I am Ian Hest, and a special guest today, the one, the only, Thomas Rongen joining us, the voice of Miami on the radio. You can hear him. Uh, also, also see him on BN Sports, on CBS Sports as well, the all-time Fort Lauderdale striker. Great. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us on the Heron Outlet today. Thanks for having me, guys. You guys are doing an awesome job, by the way, so that's pretty cool to be on. Really appreciate that. Uh, you know, it, it, it has been uh, a lot of hard work for us to, to build this and a lot of hard work for Miami but that looked in the offseason to be taking that next step from the playoffs last year into the first two winning games of this year. Things look to be going very well, and yet now they've fallen back into that what we've seen before, a five-game losing streak, this last one at the hands of FC Dallas at home, now two losses in a row at home. What have you seen over the course of these five games that sort of have lost the identity for Miami? I, I'll dive in that a little bit later, but I want to give you, as a coach of four MLS teams, uh, having played hundreds of games, and as I said again, being with four different teams, um, it's very tough when you don't start well. I had a great team with the mutiny and we ran away with the um, supporter shield. Uh, went to New England and that was a rebuild because they got it wrong the first two years. So two years later, I'm in, in New England and failed my rebuild. So I got let go out for two years. Ended up with DC, another great example of how to build a team from the ground. And that includes Chicago, and I'm talking about the early years. You get it right from the start. That includes your DPs. That includes your American players. That includes managing your cap, obviously. And due to MLS restrictions and the penalties, you are really behind the eight ball. And I think that's really a starting point. And that starting point means that over the last two years, but particular this offseason, but you look at Julian Garanza that we had to let go for not necessarily footballing reasons. Uh, you can put Figal and, and, and Pires in there, you know, uh, obviously. Uh, you look at Higuain and, and Pasuela, that's 20 plus goals, 10 plus assists last year. But you look at Damian Lowe, Macoon, Lewis Morgan, that you had to let go in order to get something else, and that something else might have been uh, a little bit more money underneath the cap, uh, another international slot, uh, whatever it might be, more money to spend on. Uh, more journeyman players, and that's where we arrive now a little bit. Uh, you put Nilas in that, you put Pellegrini in that, you put Reyes in that, you look at Vasilev. I'm mentioning five guys now that have become very important players for their respective new teams in MLS, and some are doing well uh, abroad. So you go from a slower transition defensive team in its first year, also through Phil's first and second year, uh, in order to get to a team where they feel like we got to be the brand that we <laughs> that we like to be, you know, an, uh, an attacking, fluid, uh, South Florida, et cetera, attacking side. And now we're going to uh, this year, and all of a sudden you're saying, hmm, those for first two games, just let's be real honest, most of us, including me and you guys, Pretty much after Montreal and Philly said, wow, what a great job have they done in the offseason, uh, replacing those players uh, with that current crop that looked very good against Montreal, which might be worse than we are, <laughs> that, that we, we realize now after seven games. A Philly team that wasn't focused early in the season on MLS, but really wants to get to the final or win the Champions League, and they might get there against, hopefully, LAFC. Um, and then you're looking at this five-game slide where all of a sudden our shortcomings are, are, are clearly showing. You know, we, we've tried to build a possession team and we've become a, yeah, we've become a possession team with no shots on target at the end of the day. And that's what you want to do with possession. You look at instead of Jean Mota, which I like, I like Jean Mota a lot, but there's no final third entry passes. You know, it's sideways, it's a little bit forward. Uh, uh, set pieces as well, and he is number one, I think, in the league in 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 in, in pass uh, succession or what, 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 what you know whatever you, whatever you, you you want to call that. So yes, fast forward to now, and we've become very vulnerable in transition defensively. 
You got a few guys that last year were very good at underperforming. Let's be really honest. Chris McVay is one of them. Uh, DeAndre is, 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 is another one. Uh, and then you, with the jettison of some of those players, you jettison also a lot of leadership. And this team looks like, boom, you hit with Gregory. And all of a sudden you realize now how important Gregory is, all the little things, his leadership on both sides of the ball, making other players better, better as well. Um, the combination of working throughout the whole preseason up to a day maybe before the game out of a 4-4-2, Leo Campana, uh, 11 goals last year. Uh, one of your more important guys goes down. You got to readjust your, your, your lineup. You got a 4-2-3-1, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then go back finally this last game, which is not easy, guys. Play different systems from one game to another. I've been there as a player. I've been there as a coach as well. It's hard to execute one system, as we see now over five games. And all of a sudden, we look like a, a, a rudderless team that can create opportunities, that can score, and becomes extremely vulnerable, uh, as this last game showed against Dallas on, on in any kind of transition. Because it could have been five or six for Dallas. Let's be... Let's be real honest. So you got to now rethink and reorganize if you feel Neville, obviously. So that's where we're at right now. And, and what is that reorganization? And what is that rethinking? Um, is that being a little bit more conservative? Is that um, trying to, and we, we found out that obviously we're getting an Ecuadorian player uh, from, from um, uh, Emelec, a uh, 30-year-old, that I've seen some video is somewhat similar to Gregory, but you never know. And, you know it is. I've been there as a head coach, and I, I had some great players coming through, but it took a while for El Pibe Valderrama to get comfortable in his skin in MLS and in a new country. Marco Echeverri, early on, DC struggled. And, and you know, for a guy to come here, I uh, haven't played a minute yet, to step in and become another Gregory, let's see if that happens. So... Uh, they got two weeks to address the shortcomings. That's probably a good thing. Although as a player, I know it's a bad thing because you get hammered five. You go, oh, here we go. I got to go to training. All of a sudden, the atmosphere that was so great in the first two weeks, the whole organization is like this, you know, uh, a little bit of laughter, but not as much as we know this team has in terms of their bonding. I think they're questioning themselves as players because there there's some good pros there on that team. Um, but Yetlin is not a natural leader like Gregory. Uh, players do consult him. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's always a great calendar. So again, you know, a little bit of like a leadership is Sergi the right guy, but then you get a language barrier. So there's so many things now to address for uh, the hierarchy within Inter Miami. Um, this team has shown in the past that they can overcome tough times and put a streak together. Can they do it now? That's the big question mark. With, in my opinion, still due to the restrictions, uh, a team that probably deserves where they are and uh, lacks quality in, 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 in all three lines. If Drake Callender is your best player, that means that <laughs> you're giving up a boatload of chances to other teams because he's been just incredible. Uh, shot shaving is, is great, but as a goalkeeper, you want to be very low. That means your team in front of you is well organized and doesn't give anything away. And saying that, he puts himself in the picture of you know, potentially be talking for the U.S. men's national team, uh, which is also a little crazy rhetoric, but, uh, you know, fair deuce. He probably deserves to be there. Uh, so, yeah, pumping the brakes on the attacking tactics. Um, you know, that, that, that's the big question. And do you, and Phil came out with some very strong words, in particular about complacency and pointed out, uh, Joseph Martinez, but Stefanelli is underperforming, Bryce Duke is underperforming, McVeigh and Yetlin, two other guys I just mentioned. And, and then it becomes, uh, it becomes a tough puzzle all of a sudden. Yeah, I wanted, well, this tough puzzle, we, every week that we have this <laughs> podcast, Thomas, we try and figure it out. We, we go back and forth talking tactics, Ian, Alex, and I, and we're, we're trying to figure out what would possibly work best hypothetically and I kind of want to pick your brain on it because as you mentioned this team had a pragmatic style early on in their in their tenure in, in MLS and then they now they've tried to switch to this more attacking style but instead of the attacking style that we saw last year through the middle with Pozuelo and Higuain 
you don't have the quality there anymore. And they've shifted a lot of that towards the wing play. And with a guy like Franco Negri coming on, trying to you know take up for the balance that Yedlin was attacking on the right side so much last year, Negri gets forward a ton more. They're attacking so much on the wings. The, the wingers aren't receiving balls in areas where they are able to cut in, draw defenders. They're having a lot of one-on-one chances way out wide, having to whip in long crosses. And it's just become very ineffective football. Is that something that you've noticed as well? And if so, how do you go about changing that? What is the best, most effective style to play for this team with the personnel that they have? That's that's the biggest question. The 4-4-2 system is is the easiest system to teach and and to execute. Uh, Then comes the 3-5-2 to mind. Uh, 4-2-3-1, diamond midfield, very fluid. You're going to have intelligent players to do that. Tactically, uh, smart guys that uh, understand positional sense that we seem to lack as well. And yes, we do go out wide, uh, but we don't have anybody that can stretch it back four or actually off the dribble consistently, like a Jesus Ferreira showed, uh, take people right. on. So you become right. also a small team in terms of physical stature. You know, so I mean, you can go out wide and pump balls in the box, although Leo is back right now, but clearly far from where he needs to be. And then his partner in the game, Joseph Martinez, really looks far from where he was a few years back in Atlanta. Uh, that's a, 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 a concern. I would almost say uh, semi-low, semi-high pressure, I think. Invite the other team out there and then find a way uh, to hurt teams in, in transition the way they are hurting us. So easier to teach <laughs> being cynical and, and defensive than trying to have 65% possession with one quality shot on target through 90 minutes. That just is not good enough, not just in the last game, but in the last five games, basically. So you gotta, you got to really rethink your, 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 your strategy. Uh, is a trade possible? Can we find... Um, Ariel Lasser probably is our fastest player. Um, but Ariel has become a journeyman, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you look at Stefanelli, you look at Coco, uh, you look at some of the other guys that are dabbling in Scandinavia somewhere, some other places, and then I look at other rosters, and I'm going, okay, <laughs> that's a guy that played X amount of games in Syria and has scored 100 plus goals. You know, just looking at Toronto now with LAFC, uh, Buanga, and, and, and things like that. So you I don't. I really don't know because in certain positions, I just don't see any players on this roster that can execute um, a game plan, in particular in the middle to final third that will allow us to maybe chance creation. So, do you become again a pragmatic team and grind out results, um, saying that? In our previous years, we had two or three really go-to guys. Iguain was one of them. And you can even see, say, Fetty off the bench, his brother, could change the game. I just don't see anybody right now on this team that can take a game single-handedly or two guys that you can count on to create chances and score goals in each and every game. So it's even hard for me to, to, to figure that one, that one out. And, and, and if Phil Neville would ask me, I probably would not have right now too many suggestions, um, quite frankly. And if you have Leo and, and, and Joseph, you're probably looking at the front two. Uh, or you have to sit somebody and make a real, you know, I mean, I made some really strong statements throughout my career. And most of the time I won, sometimes I lost. I said uh, El Pibe Valderrama won game. I, just to show to the group that I was willing to take on the big boys as well if they underperformed. And as a Dutchie, I'm very direct and, and honest as that. I said uh, Eddie Pope a few times while he played brilliantly for Bruce Arena for the U.S. Men's National Team and qualified the World Cup, but underperformed for us because he thought it was a cake, you know, a, 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 an easy walk in the park, so to speak. So uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta make some statements by and Phil's- making some decisions. I think there's two or three young players that I would love to see actually. Why not in, inject some youth? I think that Borgelin is, is perfectly fitted for this this league if I look at his qualities. Just the, the few minutes he's played. He takes his goal well in the first game. 
he's almost involved twice in 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 chances he just can get there on, on, on that final touch but he gets himself at least in a position where he can score um the three or four times we've gone direct versus leo he's able to to you know redirect the ball into space for somebody maybe uh, and it was i think uh, pizarro uh, to run onto so that to me is a guy that you have to start i like ben Kerman. I, I like Kermanji and he's he's young but he seems tactically very very astute and he's a guy that probably can can find a final ball if he gets the opportunity i i wouldn't mind seeing phil neville's son that uh, is is a very good crosser of the ball the way he takes that that that, that first time volley and pace of going to cross he also yep. doesn't kill his own space which yet at times does because he's so eager to go forward and and negri as well although we get some decent crosses from that side and he scored a goal and obviously an assist uh, which is scary because it's probably still combined the highest on this team after seven games. You get your left fullback. But then the inability for us to understand that if, if we go forward, uh, somebody's going to sit or Christopher's going to slide already to left to the left side and play out of the three, which we don't. And all of a sudden, the transition goes, oh, we're scrambling. And then also the lack of athleticism, yeah. both in the back line and in the front line, where we have some buzzy players, but not explosive guys that go woof. I'm, I see you later. Uh, yeah. So the, right now, it, though, it's it, it's, it, yeah. it's tough. It seems it seems like what they're trying to do is is like you were talking about use those those crosses with with the fullbacks right now. They have you know attempted almost a very high number compared to other teams throughout the league. The problem is that they are very low percentage crossers. There's less than twenty percent success rate on it right now, which is you know one of the worst in the league. Their shooting average Correct. distance is is over 19 yards. So the average shot is coming from outside of the box. Um, that's fourth highest in MLS. W where do you yeah. figure out with this team ways to get guys in the box and, and closer to goal? The, to, I mean, you saw with Kristoff in the first game, that was the best example of one, or Borgelin as well. They don't seem to have mm -hmm. guys in the box that can even create those opportunities. And, that, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a great uh, point. I think you might have even pointed out or somebody else uh, when we got in good positions late in the game, to be real honest, Dallas allowed us in the game. Dallas sat back and said, we're going to win one nothing." I thought it was too early. I was like, oh my God, the, letting a, the lesser team now being able to push people forward and then anything can happen, i.e. the penalty almost or an mm -hmm. end ball or a ricochet or whatever. If Dallas would have stayed with that, that material, that would have created three or four more great opportunities, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, the coach put all his eggs in one basket. He walks away, one nothing on the road. Thanks for coming, three points. And there were certain sequences where we were out wide or or just these 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 little pockets. And then you look up, and there's nobody in the 80 yard box. I am going, okay, but you get good numbers going forward. Crash the box. Work three days a week on just having at least three guys making hard runs, far posts. If you play out of a four four two. The nearest guy got to go. I had a great combination up front with Roy Laster, Jaime Moreno. Going back to Roy Laster with the with the mutiny and Beppe Goldaresi. And 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 when we got out wide, we knew we we're going to have three guys in the box: Fur, Fars, twelve inside the eighteen, four almost. You know, um, and a lot of times we become also stationary in the box. We end up staying there instead of saying, well, "Let me pull out again and create space for somebody else," and then go again. Um, Joseph Martinez actually in the first few games got some very good looks that he in the past would have buried. Balls that came back to him where he had a really good look at the goal and he just couldn't hit the target. There was four or five of them that I go, you know, at least with Atlanta, three of them been, been in the back, back of the box as well. Uh, and that quick explosive separation that he doesn't have right now. So uh, that's a great question. I, I've coached a lot. I've, I've, I've done coaches seminars on, on systems as well but at the end of the day you got to have players that can execute I don't care what the system is and that might be harsh and I might be slept in the wrist but I just don't see enough quality right now that any system with the exception of going being, being very pragmatic and getting a bunch of hard workers and saying okay we've got two or three x factors and, and difference makers maybe that can help us on uh, a, a set piece maybe with Capana coming back with Leo or Chris, we got a little more height uh, and we became vulnerable. Uh, look at, look at Philly, you know, the header over 
we have these mismatches. I mean, Jan Jetler is, is up against a guy that's four inches bigger than him in that goal. You look at the goal against Toronto at the back post all of a sudden. A weak side defending because of fullbacks are so high at the pitch is poor as well. So we get, we get hammered on one side where people can penetrate uh, what Dallas did. Or a lot of times when they build two or three passes and the diagonal ball comes, you look at Yetlin trailing on, on that goal, which becomes a bumpy goal, but he's not goal side enough. And due to his athleticism, he's still able to get a little piece of the ball, but in his starting position, is a little bit better in seeing ball and opponent at the same time, instead of, oh, he's gone, i got to now race to come back, and he's able to do that at times. So we're, we're just so vulnerable now and, and, and seem to lack the tactical understanding within whatever and system we play and, and, and quality, um, you know, to break teams down. And I don't know the three, two, or one... It's will, getting will solve that, quite frankly. And then I go back to, let's at least say, keep the zero as best as we can and hope, as Dallas said, that we may be on a counter or on a set piece can get some results. It's all about results right now, I think, more so than anything else. Um, and hopefully the new player can provide us uh, something that, that we are sorely lacking in, in Gregory. It's it's getting, what you just mentioned, is getting exploited perfectly now. Dallas, I thought, anytime Jesus Ferrer was on the ball, he was on the right half of the field where Negri was supposed to be and in behind Negri the entire time pushing the back line. And when you said earlier on that Dallas could have had four or five goals in that match, that mm -hmm. is possibly an understatement for how many times they were getting through on goal. And I think a lot of teams, uh, Ezra Hendrickson mentioned it for Chicago, and now you look at what the Dallas coach did and his adjustments throughout the match, the quick little pressures to try and get the ball in behind those back spaces. Um, it's getting exploited heavily. And so these two weeks off are probably going to be, you know, a time for Phil Neville to, to make those changes. And I think they have to be made if they want to be yeah. somewhat uh, and successful. And again, you know, something the brakes on, on, on your attacking tactics, uh, getting back to basics is always important. Fundamentals, you know, for players, simpler, yeah. simplifying things. Uh, this team just, in terms of you talk about triangles or anything like that, we, 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 we just, when the ball turned over, the intelligent runs the Dallas players make with and without the ball already. We, we, we don't see it from our team, you know, so I'm, we don't recognize space quick enough. We don't right. know how to overload a, a, an area and then go to an underload maybe. We have, we're, we're moving the ball, but we're moving the ball without any kind of real <laughs> tactical understanding how to break somebody down. And then we end up out wide, and as Ian just mentioned, uh, with crosses that are low percentage, not good runs, not enough players in the box, um, you know, and then second balls, second or third phase attacks. If you look at our opponents, they always seem to find second and third balls. We don't do that well enough. So we're more anticipating and pro being proactive. And then all of a sudden, as I said again, in transition, we're just getting burned right now because our balance, we unbalance ourselves with all these passes and getting numbers in front of the ball. And if you get numbers in front of the ball, you lose a ball in a bad spot, I call it. Watch out. And teams have, have clearly hammered us that way. Thomas, we'll let you go in, in just a minute. And thank you so much for spending the time with us here on the Heron Outlet. I, I, I had one more for you. And, and you've been on both sides, both as a player and a coach, dealing with a difficult situation um, from the coaching aspect of it. Fans can sometimes be a little fickle. We've seen in the recent weeks and the losing streak a, a louder cry of, of accountability on Phil Neville. Um, mm -hmm. He was asked about it post-game after FC Dallas, and he took full responsibility. He said it has to be uh, on him, and, and he has to be accountable. In this conversation, from, from hearing from you, it seems, though, that regardless of system, regardless of, of really anything, if the personnel isn't there right now, there's only so much that – coaching is going to get out of this situation where where does where does the responsibility lie and where can you evaluate true success in this format dealing with the injury to Campana to start the year and now Gregory for most of the year uh and just how can we assess what the the, the job is and how well it's being done yeah that's a, that's a great question obviously uh it's a job poorly done 
uh, based on the record, you know, and that's how we, on that, on the highest level, that's how I lost jobs as well, you know, I mean, that's the way it goes in this, in, in this business. Um, you can take a very hard line approach now, the next two weeks as a coach, I think that's what's needed. This group is a pretty good group. They work hard, they're honest, and it's, it's nothing to do with that, I think, although it lacks leaders. Team building, and team building can do tactically on the field and, and off the field as well. Maybe maybe a real leader emerges in some exercises that you can do that you go, that's the guy that, that people seem to lean on that I didn't even recognize for the last year and a half. Uh, and during tough stretches, real leaders will come forward. Uh, I've made some changes in my captaincy with, uh, with several teams that I played for. Um, I made, and that was based on performances, one or two tough calls on guys that were considered untouchable and would always start. And he did that last year with Iguain and got a very positive response. So is Joseph a guy that maybe needs to sit because he's maybe too comfortable? And he's not the only one, uh, quite frankly, because if you look at this team and you look first and foremost due to injuries, pretty much as everybody, you know, the starting 11 picked itself the last, you know, uh, seven games or the last six prior to Leo coming back. And then players do get comfortable. I don't care what they say. <laughs> and it looks like that some guys are, 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 are comfortable. So make it uncomfortable and, 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 and make a tactical change. Again, more pragmatic, more win-oriented, uh, maybe ugly at times. Uh, make an example of a player, deservedly so. Uh, Martinez has not, that's his worst drought ever. Um, and, and what I did... With Tempai, I inserted a rookie, Steve Ralston, that became, that didn't play the first few games, became the rookie of the year. I added Ben Olsen, who was my, you know, was a rookie that year and became a starter. And I said that John Hart or somebody else, because they underperformed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And those things worked out, but didn't work out in New England twice when I did it, didn't work out at Chivas. Um, uh, so it, that, that's a, that's a, tough one. I feel knows the pulse of this team probably better than, 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 than anybody else. Uh, is it time for a Ryan Sale or a, uh, a, a, you know, Mabika as well? You know, when they play, they play well. You add height and if you go pragmatic, maybe you want to add a little more uh, height as well. So in set pieces, maybe you can, you can get one, which you did early in the season and we scored in a set piece with Sergi, you know, scoring a goal. It was either against Montreal or Philly of a of a corner, um, but yeah, Phil Phil the buck stops with with Phil obviously, and if this trend continues, he's going to be under pressure and he will feel the pressure, uh, and and correctly so. I still think this team can turn it around. I, I know that Chris is probably working very hard behind the scenes with not much that he has to work with due to the situation we're in financially more than anything else and the restrictions of the cap and. Um, and, and obviously the financial ban they gave us for two years. And I'm telling you guys, this league don't try to change a team. Um, I think Chris McVeigh was at one point in time the only starter in one game from last year. So that's another thing, you know. You're almost looking like we're an expansion team again. And, and we got a lot of players halfway towards the end of preseason. Stefanelli, Negri, got another guy now coming in late as well. Uh, some guys are word fit, like I, I still firmly believe that Martinez is trying to work himself up to 100%, and more so from the explosive side. Leo looked uncomfortable. Uh, I'm telling you, you can train as hard as you want. You can run as mu many uh, doggies as you want. The game is a different beast. So he needs to get his legs underneath his, him again in a real game situation. And that's not going to take one 90-minute game. Uh, it's going to take quite a few. And in this league, which is very demanding physically already, um, and you're going to Houston, that's a little bit on a run. Uh, yeah, this is going to be tough. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that internally they have some talks. I don't know how much pressure ownership group and, and David, including David Beckham, is now talking about that. But when I went through these skits with other teams, uh, there was always a very serious talk with the ownership group. I said, Thomas, we believe in you, but... <laughs> We can't continue like this, so the pressure is on, and we're giving you internally the next five games to remedy this. If not, we might be looking at a, a huge gap again to make the playoffs.
you look at we're, we're closer again to the bottom, which is three points. And if you look at early in the year after the first few games, people talk about oh, we're going to be in the top four now, you know, and stuff like that. And we're also very far removed from this top four at this particular time in 12th place. So yes, accountability at the end of the day, top to bottom uh, needs to be there. It's honest. It's tough. It's Thomas wrong. And he'll tell you the truth that there's no one who can explain it better. Thank you so much for joining us on the Heron outlet. Um, it, it, make sure that you check out Thomas on inter Miami's radio broadcast throughout the year. Also check him out on BN CBS sports, the one and only Thomas wrong. thank you so much for joining us today on the Heron outlet. Ian Austin. Thanks. Keep up the good work guys. Take care.